And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today we're taking a look at The Hobbit Enchanted Gold. You know, come to think of it, what does that have to do with anything? I'm not sure what the Enchanted Gold bit is, but there sure are a lot of Hobbit games, aren't there? <laughs> and this is not the first two-player Hobbit game. Mm -hmm. There was a much old, uh, there's at least one that I know of. But there's quite a few Hobbit games, of course, because of the recent success of the movies and the books, resurgence of their popularity. This is a two-player game from Fantasy Flight, although originally it was from Europe. I say that now because it doesn't feel like a Fantasy Flight game at all. It doesn't. It's not an original. It's about collecting jewels and spending them to fight enemies with a deck of cards. Very simple. Let me show you how simple. This game is to get the most points, and you're going to be doing that by fighting off creatures who are worth certain amounts of points. You can see here, for example, that this this troll here is worth three. The number in front of him shows which wave he comes in. There's going to be four waves of creatures throughout the game, where you'll have five ordinary enemies and then one major enemy. Players are going to have a handful of cards. And on your turn, you're going to play a card. And this card that you play is going to give you a certain number of jewels that you're going to be able to pull from this exceptionally large bag. But you'll reach in there. So let's say I play Bjorn. He lets me draw three jewels. And he lets me draw an additional three jewels if this character here is showing in the game on the board, uh, which is not happening. So I would just get to draw three jewels. And I'll look at the color of the jewels. So here I have one yellow and two blues. And then I look, can I defeat any of these people with one yellow and two blues? Hey, yeah, I can defeat these guys for two blues. And if you can defeat someone, you have to. So I defeat these. Now these don't give me any points, but I keep this card face up in front of me and later on if I need a blue jewel, I can flip him down to do that. Once all these guys have been defeated and you can defeat two guys on your turn, then you can defeat the eye golem, who you can see here uh, takes a yellow, a green, and a purple. Whoever gets him gets a wild jewel, or they can take the ring. You'll probably take the ring because some of the cards in the deck, notably the ones that say uh, Bilbo on them, let me find one of those. When you, if you have the ring, you get to draw an additional two jewels. He normally draws two and then discards one, but this lets you draw four and discard one. If you go through all the cards in your deck, then you shuffle and draw again, but you're always going to play one card on your turn. Like I said, when wave one is gone, then we bring out wave two. Here we have the elves, and you can see here that these cards require more jewels to get, but also give more points. And in the case of some of these, they give uh, cards that I'll be able to flip over later to get two purple jewels. And, you'll, and even when you get to the final wave four, you'll see that the orcs here that's worth seven points, or this orc here is worth 10 points. The final bad guy is worth 12 points, Bolg. Um, on level three, there are dragons that you'll be fighting. When you fight them, you'll immediately get jewels from the bag. So hitting Smog here is worth seven points. I need two yellows and two reds to do so. I'll get seven points and then draw two jewels from the bag. Once the final enemy has been defeated, you simply add up all your points on the cards that you've defeated, and whoever has the most points is the winner. First, I'll give props to this bag. It's so easy to get your hand in this thing. Sure, it's, you it's can like put the, two hands in at the same time. It's you can put it over your head and rob someone. Okay, but it's usually the bags aren't this big. No. For someone who has big hands, it's kind of a nice thing after mm. a while. Anyhow, um, it seems like we're reviewing a lot of these games where you pull gems from a bag. Yeah, it's been a gem-filled uh, gem filled week <laughs> this week. This game thematically is weak. It's it's not it's thematically it's non-existent. I would say. Yeah. Well, the only thing is the Bilbo card with the ring. But how does getting jewels fight off wolves? <sighs> you 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 hurl them at the wolves, and as the sun, yeah, no, no. <laughs> yeah, the, you're not pulling that one off. Before I started, yeah. <laughs> 
Um, so the, so the, the theme is almost non-existent. This could have been anything. Yes. Um, when we first were going over it, we were mentioning Splendor. Because mm -hmm. it had kind of a similar theme where you're gathering things together to pay for stuff. The problem with this game, and yes, I'm going to say it's problematic, is it's almost too simple. Well, there, there's a minor problem I should mention. First of all, if you're colorblind, this game's no good at all. There's no way to differentiate between red and green. Um, and you have to do that because that's the whole game. Yeah, there's no symbols to help you with that. So it is what it is. If you're colorblind, yeah. Um, but, but, but really, it all depends on what you pull from the bag. Mm -hmm. It's not like you have a lot of options. So I pulled those two blues and a yellow, right? And I said, okay, I can beat the guy with two blues. What else can I do? Nothing. Nothing. I had no other options. And in I fact, can't if even... you can beat the guy, you must. Right, I was going to say, I can't even save them. No. So I spend the two blues, and I'm left with a yellow. The only option I have is which card to play for my hand. And it seems pretty logical. Play the one that gets you the most jewels. Play the best one. Or don't. Play a worse one. I mean, there are times where you get in a weird position where if you kill two guys out there, then your opponent can kill the leader, mm -hmm. who is many more points usually, or, I mean, like, the final guy is 12 points, while his um, guys below him are 7 or 8 or 9 or 10, and this guy's easier to beat than some of those guys. Right. And so, I, it's just kind of weird. The game is short. I'll give it that. We're talking 15, quick, 20 minutes. Yeah, it's a quick game. It's just, it's very... It, it plays itself a little bit, you know, yeah. you draw from back, you see what you can do, you do that because the game's telling you to do it, and the ages, you know, the, the, the phases, the one, the two, the three, and the four, don't feel interesting or distinct, there's no progression to the game, there's nothing captivating about this game, sadly, for me. Yeah, I wanted to like it because I'm a fan of The Hobbit. I like The Hobbit theme. And I'm a fan of small card games for two. I really am, typically, but this is not one I'm a fan of. Yeah, this one, it, it feels like it's just there. I, I suppose I give to two people and tell them how to play it, and they could go back and forth, but when it's done and over with, the person who wins, can, who wins, can you really say, I played better than the other person? I don't think you can. Mm -hmm. It's going to be, I drew better from the bag at the right moment. Yeah. Or I had the right combo of cards. And even the cards themselves are... There's one card called the Eagles, which lets you reshuffle them all back in. But if you don't draw that card to the end, it's kind of worthless. There's Gandalf, who can trade two gems in for one gem of your choice. But these cards are just not... You just do them. I don't know. Eh, no this is a really big miss for me, actually. I actually dislike it because of that. It's not even like mad for me. I dislike it because I want it to do something and it didn't allow me. So, bleh for me. Same here. They start a judgment. Bleh! <laughs> Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door. Yeah. Yeah.